In the name of God Almighty, the most gracious, the most merciful, on behalf of Dr. Jamal Sanad Saudi, Director General of the ECSSR, I would like to welcome you at the ECSSR. And on your behalf, I would like to welcome His Excellency Hamid Karzai, the former President of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan. We meet with him today talking about terrorism and the war on terror impact on Muslim countries. Your Excellency Hamid Karzai served two terms as President of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, having been elected into office in 2004 and 2009. He was the chairman of the interim administration of Afghanistan, a position to which he was elected by the participants at the International Conference on Afghanistan held in Bonn, Germany, December 2001, between 1983 and 1989. Mr. Kazai served among the Mujahideen fighters resisting the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan. He served as the, as the director of information and later as the deputy director of the political office uh, of the National Liberation Front led by the professor uh, Sabratullah Mujaddadi. After the formation of the transitional government of the Mujahideen in 89, he was appointed director of the foreign relations unit in the office of the president of the interim government. In 1992, he was appointed deputy foreign minister, a position he resigned from in 94 due to the outbreak of civil war. His Excellency Hamid Karzai has been awarded many honors, including an honorary knighthood by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth in 2003, the Medal of King Abdulaziz of Saudi Arabia, conferred upon him by the late King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and the Quadrica Award from Germany, the Philadelphia Liberty Medal 2004, the World's Most Successful President Award 2004, the Indira Gandhi Prize for Peace, Disarmament and Development 2005, the American Bar Association Asia Rule of Law Award 2003. He completed his BA and Master's degree in Political Science and International Relations at HP University in Shimla, India, between 76 and 83. He has received honorary degrees from the same university and Georgetown, Georgetown University 2005 and Nippon Sports Science University of Japan 2012 and the American University of Afghanistan 2015. It's an honor to welcome His Excellency Hamad Karizai to relay his uh, seminar. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. My brother, Honorable Abdullah Al Shaiba. Excellencies, ambassadors of our brotherly countries and our friendly countries, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is indeed for me a very great pleasure to be given the honor of speaking for a second time at the Emirates Center for Strategic Studies and Research. The first time I had the honor was 2003. Then we organized the event in a hotel. Today, we are in a center that's grown in its capacity and intellectual depth and in a center that has its own magnificent facility. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm today humbly speaking 
in the strategic center of a country that has religious affinity and neighborly connection with Afghanistan, the UAE has been at the forefront of assistance to Afghanistan in the past 14 years. And I was honored as the president of the interim setup in Afghanistan to visit UAE then and to have been received by the late Sheikh Zayed, the founding father of UAE. The United Arab Emirates has helped Afghanistan in so many different ways. In building homes for us, for the needy, for the disabled, for the war affected in Afghanistan, roads for us, schools for us, hospitals and mosques. And most important of all, we have now a very good university in the province of Host in Afghanistan, which was built for us by the assistance of United Arab Emirates. We were proud to name it after the late Sheikh Zayed, and I was honored to inaugurate that university. So there is much to be grateful to this magnificent, innovative country. Ladies and gentlemen, the Muslim world has experienced unprecedented upheavals in the last few years. The infiltration of radical ideologies has deeply bruised Muslim countries. Islam, Islam, a peaceful and tolerant religion and a creative civilization is today wrongly equated by some in the West with radicalism and intolerance. Many of the most violent conflicts today are situated in our countries. And some of the most heinous acts of terrorism are committed by those who claim to be Muslims. This is in sharp contrast to our glorious past. And Islam's, and Islam's tenets of tolerance, peace, and progress. Islam enriched humanity with numerous scientific, literary, and cultural achievements, and made novel contributions to philosophy, science, medicine, and many other walks of life. Islam cared about life and culture and made significant advancements in art, literature as well. Religious dogmas were alien in Muslim countries. We lived up to the truth and the eminence of the divine injunction that all humans are equal in the sight of God and that humans are born into different tribes and distinctions to know each other better. Ladies and gentlemen, in my view, subsequent to colonial rule, the disruptions we see today in the Muslim world have roots in the events of the past four decades. The unfortunate experience of Afghanistan offers examples of how foreign interventions, alien ideologies, and the promotion of extremism have damaged peace and harmony and hampered our development. Before the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, I mean before the invasion of the Soviet Union, the former Soviet Union of Afghanistan, Afghanistan was a peaceful and tolerant Muslim country, deeply believing Muslim country, but a peaceful Muslim country and a tolerant and moderate Muslim country. We were on a normal development path, taking strides towards a better and more 
prosperous life. We had prestigious universities where students from the region and beyond came to study. Our roads were being built and efforts were underway to construct major railways. Our economy was fast improving and we were making steady progress in many aspects of social and political life. With the invasion of the Soviet Union, with the arrival of the Soviet Union, the Afghan people began a struggle of liberation, which we called in Afghanistan our jihad against the former Soviet Union. While the Soviet Union tried to impose, superimpose their ideology of communism on a very deeply believing Muslim nation, the West and its allies did the same by fostering extremism in the name of support to our liberation. The external backers of our jihad also encouraged the influx of foreign fighters who came from all corners of the Muslim world to fight against the former Soviet Union. This turmoil resulted in the migration of millions of Afghans, caused tremendous damage to institutions, and injured the social fabric of Afghanistan. After the withdrawal of the Soviet Union in 1989, Various regional and international extremist movements were further harnessed by intelligence agencies in our region. And militarization in the name of religion, militarization in the name of religion was actively promoted as an instrument of foreign policy. This inflicted further damage on the body of the Afghan state. Thus, the vacuum created by the collapse of the state in Afghanistan was quickly filled by extremist forces from around the world. The emergence of the Taliban initially heralded the end of anarchy in Afghanistan. The emergence of the Taliban, which initially heralded the end of anarchy in Afghanistan, was used by external forces to promote an agenda that stood in sharp contrast to state building and the return of peace and progress in Afghanistan. As a result, Afghanistan suffered immensely and became a helpless victim of international terrorism. Millions of Afghans were terrorized, maimed, and killed. They burned schools and deprived our children of education. They even dynamited one of the most outstanding icons of our cultural heritage, the Bamiyan Buddhas, a world heritage in fact. Tragically, our country regressed deeply and lost much time and opportunity for progress. Many years before these terrorists were able to launch the heinous 9-11 attacks in the US, we, the Afghan people, warned the United States and the West of the impending menace. Regrettably, while the Afghan people continued to suffer unthinkable, unthinkable atrocities at the hands of terrorists, much of the world watched with indifference. At the same time, as the foreign radical elements returned to their own countries, radicalism spread in other corners of the Muslim world and beyond. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, just like in Afghanistan, the violence perpetrated today by terrorists and extremists in Libya, Syria, Iraq, Pakistan, Egypt, and other Muslim countries is vicious, brutal, and inhumane. Social fabric in some of these countries is being torn apart and their hard-earned development gains are being undone. Historical and cultural heritage sites such as those in Iraq, Syria, Libya, and Tunisia, and also in Pakistan in, in, in many ways, are being demolished in order to wipe out traces of a great civilization and culture. Just like in Afghanistan 14 years ago, millions of children in these Muslim countries are denied the opportunity to learn and grow in peace. 
millions of people have fled their homes on dangerous voyages in search of a safe haven, causing immense and unprecedented suffering and irreparable loss of human capital. While the Taliban and their foreign associates are the residues of a reckless past, new radical elements such as Daesh are sadly the product of recent internal upheavals and interventions that give rise to the breakdown of societies and the weakening of state institutions. War on terror has had the inadvertent effect of further strengthening extremism and terrorism. <clears throat> Regime change by military intervention has resulted in new forms of oppression and mayhem. And as a very unfortunate consequence, terrorists and non-state actors have created a virulent circle of unprecedented violence and destruction in the Muslim world. Ladies and gentlemen, while the geopolitical landscape in the world today is very different, we, unfortunately, continue to apply the same set of old rules and have not abandoned the malign calculus of geopolitical zero-sum games. For me, as I mentioned earlier, terrorism continues to be the product of policies rooted in the reckless pursuit of short-term and narrow national interests at the expense of others. The terrorism we know today is state-sponsored and the outcome of bad politics devoid of ethics. The terrorism we know today has nothing to do with religion, especially with Islam, or with the idea of a greater cause. It is not a state of mind, nor is it a societal reaction to the so-called clash of civilizations. The terrorists we know today do not shy away from attacking mosques or burning down schools and are not bothered, remorseful, or saddened by deliberately killing children through indiscriminate violence. The terrorism we know today is a phenomenon that is more political than social or ideological. And the recent history of my country and that of the region is a testimony to these observations. Distinguished guests, in order to confront the menace of terrorism, we must first address the fault lines that can be used to sow division and violence in the Muslim countries. We must work diligently to advance better education and to achieve a higher and more equitable living standards. We also need to keep pace with the trend of advancements in the world and live in a greater harmony with other religions and cultures. This morning, ladies and gentlemen, I had the opportunity, the good luck, to visit the Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque here in Abu Dhabi. And I was greatly impressed by this magnificent architectural treasure. The marble mosaic originating from many countries and the artful and the artful blend of historical and cultural elements from different civilizations make the mosque a stunning landmark of the Muslim world. But it is not just about the architecture, ladies and gentlemen. It is about celebrating cooperation and a culture of peaceful coexistence, promoting tolerance, mutual understanding, and dialogue among religions and civilizations. As the United Arab Emirates continues to be a great beacon of openness and moderation, it is imperative that we, the Muslims, our scholars, ulama, and decision makers endeavor to promote a culture of tolerance and interfaith harmony. To this end, the United Nations, governments, religious and civil society organizations must also spearhead efforts to promote interfaith dialogue and 
outreach and curb the rise and curb most importantly most importantly and curb the rise of islamophobia by challenging stereotypes and misperceptions we should appeal to the media and public opinion makers particularly in the west particularly in the west to educate and to build bridges between various cultures rather than equating differences with incompatibility, threat, and fear. The world must recognize that extremists and terrorists have foremost carried out immense atrocities against Muslims around the world. The world must recognize that extremists and terrorists have foremost carried out immense atrocities against Muslims around the world. And that they, the terrorists, are instruments of distorting a peaceful religion and tainting the image of Islam and Muslims around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to rectify the failings of the past, in order to rectify the failings of the past and reverse the threat that terrorism is posing against our common security, the world's great powers need to come together and build a new international security and economic order. Based on multilateralism, mutual respect, equity, dialogue, and cooperation, there is a need to rise above narrow national interests and, to, and realize that our security and prosperity are increasingly interdependent. No country, no country should seek only its own absolute well-being and security at the expense of others. Most important of all, no government must be allowed to use extremism to advance its geostrategic goals. The challenge for all of us today is to move beyond zero-sum games. It is equally important to build a global consensus and international partnership that will advance a cooperative and inclusive security paradigm, engaging all powers from America and Europe to China, Russia, and India to respond effectively and jointly to the diverse security challenges. This is imperative because we need a common platform for cooperation to deter and confront all acts of terrorism and to eradicate its roots in sanctuaries. Here for me, as a Muslim in the world community, it is again very, very important to use the platform today provided by the UAE Center for Strategic Studies and Research to appeal once again to decision makers and the media in the West that Muslims are the foremost sufferers at the hands of terrorism. And for them, or some of them, to equate Islam with violence is indeed a tremendous injustice to this great religion. And we, as Muslims, recognize, recognize the Bible and the prophet Jesus as a prophet of God. If you cease to believe in him, we cease to be Muslims. I hope many in the West will recognize this and see that Muslims are tolerant and part of this common humanity with all of us and will correct the misunderstandings that there are. And here it is very important, I think, that our hosts, with the gracious hospitality that I have, and for the opportunity that UE provides to all of us, will be taken as an example to show to the rest of the world. This morning, in my visit to the Grand Mosque, Sheikh Said Mosque, I saw people from all walks of life, from all corners of the world, especially from the United States and Europe. Men and women freely visiting the Grand Mosque. 
the Sheikh Zayed Mosque and seeing the beauty and architecture of that mosque. The examples that UE provides and the tolerance and innovation that it presents is a model to foster inclusive societies. And I hope we all will take this as an example and share with all others wherever we are. And I thank you very, very much, sir, for this great occasion and for the opportunity for having me here to speak my mind and speak it freely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency Hamid Karzai. And now we open the floor for Q&A for half an hour. Kindly introduce yourselves, be brief, so that we give the opportunity for everyone to participate. We have only 30 minutes. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Your Excellency, uh, for your uh, speech. We are living in a very dangerous uh, state that threatens our civilizational and cultural presence because those whom we consider as terrorists consider themselves as mujahideen and present free services for the Zionist entity. What is demanded, according to your own perspective, to save what can be saved in the Arab and Islamic world? Thank you. Well, this was a very important question. I missed the first part. You, in the last part of your question, say that these uh, extremist elements equate themselves with who? With Zionists? I'd like you to ask this again, please, so I can understand and answer properly. Kindly repeat your question once again. Thank you, Dr. Hamid Karzai. We are living in a very dangerous state that threaten our cultural and civilizational presence since whom we consider as terrorists, extremists, consider themselves as mujahideen and offer free services for the Zionist entity. What is demanded according to your own perspective to save what can be saved in the Arab world? Thank you. Well, uh, as Muslims, uh, we all know the difference between jihad and terrorism. Jihad is for a cause that is the dictate of God, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jihad is for a good cause. Terrorism is, as you described, creating fear and causing harm to innocent people. And especially here in today's environment to the Muslim world. Now, to say that the terrorists are all or some working for a Zionist cause, I don't know. If they are, they're hurting humanity and human beings. But I can speak for myself. As a Muslim, and if you noted, I had a remark in the end of my statement that we Muslims believe in Jesus and Moses, Hazrat Isa and Hazrat Musa, as we say it in, in Arabic. 
and in the books, the holy books of these two great religions that we consider the religions of God. That if we don't believe in these two prophets in their books, that we cease to be Muslims. And I hope this is understood as such also by our fellow human beings and citizens of the world in the Christianity and Judaism. So I hope that there is no connection between the terrorists and any religion. If there is any connection, that connection goes to governments and intelligence agencies, not religions. Thank you, Your Excellency Hamid. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency Hamid Karzai, for this uh, long experience in Afghanistan. And of course, you have a long experience, uh, definitely, with Russia in particular. We see today, of course, the interference of Russia in the region in particular. And I think uh, that uh, terrorism will be enforced more, and all factions and all fronts will be opened. Uh, due to your own long experience. Uh, I hope uh, we hear your own perspective about the interference of Russia in the region. Thank you, Your Excellency. Well, this is a very difficult question. When, when I was the president, my brother, I thought I did not have... Uh, the luxury of freedom of speech. But as a former president, I see that that ability has further shrunk. <laughs> I don't have any freedom of speech. But coming to your question, the Soviet Union was our neighbor. It did provide a lot of support to Afghanistan before the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. And when the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan, we waged our jihad with the consequences that I spoke about earlier. But to be fair to Russia today, the United States has a great free hand around the world. It looks like it played it too much. So it forced some of us around the world to speak back, including myself in Afghanistan. You must have heard my statements. What I wish today for us all in this world is a world order where countries like ours are not stepped over by anybody. We like to live peacefully between the East and the West. And we like to respect both of them. And of course, we want peace for the Middle East and for Afghanistan and for Pakistan. I don't know if the Pakistan ambassador or someone from the embassy is here and for others around the world. So uh, as an elder, my desire is for peace and stability and a world order where a balance of that keeps us safe and secure. Uh, His Excellency, uh, President Karzai, my name is Zabiul Yarmal. I'm the President and CEO of Cefe Group International. I remember uh, that day back in 2007, which I graduated from university and I got my graduation certificate from your hand in Presidential Palace in Kabul. Mm -hmm. And on that day I explained my vision for the future of my country and I was very optimistic on that day, not only for the future of Afghanistan, uh, but also for the future of our region. Unfortunately, today uh, terrorism and extremism 
is the reality of Afghanistan as well as the reality of our region, which is being expanded on a daily basis. And uh, mainly the Muslim nations and the Muslim countries are being sacrificed Absolutely. from this negative uh, uh, facts of terrorism and extremism. Absolutely. While the reality is that Islam is totally against this extremism and terrorism. Sure. My question from Your Excellency is that as the former president of a country that has been suffered a lot from the terrorism and extremism, and still you're being considered as one of the most effective characters of Afghanistan politics. Uh, the question which I have is, what is your specific recommendation for the leaders of Muslim nations and Muslim countries in order to avoid the terrorism and extremism and in the state to put their countries and their nations toward the path of development, prosperity, and a good future for their nations. Okay. Thanks a lot. Well, uh, we have uh, here among us today uh, the ambassador of uh, Saudi Arabia, of our brotherly country, uh, that we uh, see as the center of the Islamic world. Uh, that we uh, hold uh, dear to our heart and uh, a country towards which we uh, stand uh, five times a day and pray where uh, Kaaba is uh, and we have a um, representative of uh, our brothers uh, from Kuwait uh, and uh, the United Arab Emirates I'm sure other Muslim countries are here too that uh, I'm not aware of uh, but these are the countries that we uh, see um, as um, our leading lights. Uh, Saudi Arabia is, uh, is our spiritual center, uh, our spiritual guide. Uh, United Arab Emirates, as I mentioned in my remarks, is the country that has blended uh, modernity and uh, traditional values and has uh, created an open society that is an example to all um, uh, around the world. It's perhaps the most uh, visited country um, uh, in the world as well, among the, the most visited countries. Th those are tremendous examples of inspiration uh, for us to follow uh, with spirituality and uh, in Saudi Arabia and uh, with the uh, Saudi serving as our elder brother, and with the Emirates and Kuwait and others serving as uh, our brothers and inspiring progress into the future. Uh, now, the question of tourism, as I mentioned earlier, is one that perhaps goes beyond the ability of us as Muslim countries alone. Uh, there is much that we should do and we can do to put ourselves together intellectually on this question and to find ways. Because indeed, as you mentioned, in the, and, and, and as I mentioned in my remarks, Muslims are uh, the first and foremost uh, sufferers at the hands of extremists and terrorism. Therefore, it's first upon us to stand up. But then, unfortunately, global politics is not played that way. And terrorism is a result not of our shortcomings in the Muslim world. We do have shortcomings, but it is not the direct result of our shortcomings in the Muslim world. It is the consequence of bigger machinations in global politics, which we are affected by firstly. Therefore, um, a multilateral world order where the big powers together with the significant countries of the Muslim world can together play a role um, uh, against it, and I hope it will come about because as we see, uh, terrorism is beginning to move beyond uh, the Muslim countries in terms of suffering, which will also affect others as it did in September 11 attacks in, in, in New York and the events in London, the events in Paris, the events in Spain. All that is a reminder, including of course China, which suffers from terrorism, and also Russia. So I hope, and India, very, very much. Uh, so I hope um, there will be a larger international uh, sincerity about this.
بيوت وسوي فخامة الرئيس شكرا جزيلا Your Excellency thank you don't you see that it is time to divide between uh, or to differentiate between Muslims uh, uh, and Islam, knowing that Islam is an international religion and it is getting disseminated uh, even when uh, terrorist uh, groups are carrying out terrorist uh, acts. Uh, they are uh, really hurting Islam. Uh, there are strategic plans that are being based according Accordingly, uh, against Islam, that it is being spread uh, greatly, knowing that we are really uh, witnessing uh, withdrawal for Muslims. Isn't it time to, di to differentiate between both Muslims and Islam? Well, we are Muslims because we are followers of Islam. So how can we differentiate? Uh, as Muslims, as the followers of Islam, uh, we cry out to the larger world, to the world around us, that we are victims of terrorism and that it is, it's got nothing to do with us or with our religion. So as Muslims, it is upon us a responsibility, our duty, to explain to the rest of the world that Islam is uh, a religion of peace. When you say salam, Alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. That's what you convey. Uh, that it's a religion of peace and of tolerance and a religion that does not recognize uh, prejudice. Bilal, the first muazzin of our Islam, of our religion, was from Africa. He was not from Arab countries. There is, no, there is no differentiation in color or groups. Therefore, uh, Muslims uh, need to be proud that they are uh, followers of Islam and explain uh, to the rest of the world this uh, clearly. And also, of course, it is upon us Muslims as well, as I mentioned in my remarks, uh, that we make sure that we live as Muslims in greater harmony and coexistence and friendship with other religions in the world. That we explain to them that those who perpetrate crimes in the name of our religion have nothing to do with our religion or with us as Muslims. And at the same time, request especially in the rest of the world, the West, their intellectuals, their thinkers, their media, their opinion makers, their decision makers, that uh, deliberately or, or uh, out of uh, not thinking carefully that they should not be spreading Islamophobia that doesn't serve any purpose, anybody, anywhere. آخر سؤالين هناك سؤال آخر واحد هناك غالب Your Excellency, I would just like to thank you for your sharing of your experiences and your insights. As an educator, um, I see that we set ideas for children at a very early age. When wars can last for hundreds of years sometimes, so the war on terror, if left unchecked with the young minds, could last for a time that we cannot even foresee. With wars, one of the ways that they stop atrocities, they formed something, they got together the world order for the Geneva Convention. Would you consider an idea of having a convention, perhaps even here in the UAE, of religions, especially the religions of the one God that you mentioned, of Moses and Jesus and of Muhammad, getting together to form a convention similar to the Geneva Convention to develop ideas of what is acceptable as far as, let's say, understanding uh, 
what the religions are about and to better classify what jihad is. Because if jihad is legitimate, then we ought to be able to define it, to have standards for it, outcomes for it, that children can learn what true jihad is, if it is a part of a religion. This way, perhaps, uh, the atrocities that are brought forth by terrorism could be at least slowed down or eventually stop. So my question is, would you consider an idea of something similar to the Geneva Conference about war atrocities to be a conference about what is acceptable in morality for religions and actions as far as jihad or you know, fighting for what is righteous? It is, it is good to uh, create forums to throw light, to shed light on uh, what jihad is. But we know that destroying a school is not jihad. It's against jihad. Because uh, Islam instructs you to learn from the grave to the grave. It instructs you to learn. Therefore, destroying a school is against Islam and Islamic tenets and injunctions. Uh, killing innocent people is not jihad. It's uh, against the very foundation of Islam. Killing one man, innocent man, is like killing the whole humanity. That's what Islam tells us. Therefore, I think we should, we should stop giving excuses for what's happening to us in a bigger, sinister, global arrangement. Why should Muslims be giving excuses for what's happening to us where we are the first victims? Jihad is clearly something else. It's liberation, it's working for the right cause, it's struggling for the right cause, it's uh, 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 seeking uh, the right path. Terrorism is killing innocent people. Now, we, the Muslim world, must garner, must, must, must inculcate in us the ability to explain ourselves. This is what's lacking. The ability to explain ourselves. Therefore, this idea of the conflict of civilizations put forward by whoever is uh, the product not of a peaceful mind. Uh, we, as Muslims, must be seeking by all means available interfaith cooperation, cooperation of civilizations, cooperation of cultures. I mentioned the Sheikh Zayed Mosque, and I'd like to go to this issue again. I'm sure you visited the mosque. The mosque is a blend of British culture, Islamic design, and various parts of history of the Islamic world, from the Mamluks to the Persian carpet to the Ottoman and to all other aspects of the various uh, stages of Islamic uh, Renaissance and cultural uh, 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 supremacy. Uh, uh, therefore, this blend, when we allow it in our mosque to have a British artist come in to uh, design a mosque that has the British patterns of flowers and then bring that to our uh, flowers from our deserts and from our history, this shows our openness. And that is what we must uh, present to the world. We'll go to Morocco, we'll go to Iran, we'll go to um, uh, Turkey, uh, come to Afghanistan, see the Grand Mosque in, in, in Herat, we'll go to um, uh, Uzbekistan and see the grandeur of Islamic architecture there and go to um, other parts of the Muslim world. 
Uh, that is what we should present, and unfortunately, we don't do it enough because we don't have a strong media. Last question. Waalaikum salam. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Your Excellency Hamid Karzai, we as media outlets, we know very well that most of these Islamic movements, which are called terrorist movements, have been created in support of the West, especially the USA, to achieve certain defined objectives. And when these objectives were defined, especially in Afghanistan, after the victory of the Soviet Union, uh, they left. And when they decided to return back to their country, some of the countries really did not receive them, only Saudi Arabia who received them and brought them back to their countries and really forgave them. To what extent, uh, and you are an official, that uh, the West created uh, these terrorist movements uh, and, uh, and uh, then left them uh, alone? Thank you. You mean, uh, you mean the terrorists or the Americans? Who received who? You mean you said Saudi Arabia received the radicals or the American? You call it is. It is said. It is said that the Afghani Mujahideen who came to Soviet Union, they are Islam, but they came in support of the USA. And now Daesh. It is being said the same. So most of the Islamic movements that are called terrorist Islamic movements, they are the creation of the West and supported by the West, and they can destroy them completely. But they are leaving them to expand to serve certain objectives that the USA wants. You, as a, a, a leader, you came in support of the West. To what extent, I want uh, your perspective, to what extent uh, this is said that they came, the Mujahideen, in support of the West, then the West relinquished them and did not uh, really support them anymore? I hope that your question uh, is brief and we apologize for his excellency for what he has said and we take another question uh, uh, my brother yeah. I'm very happy with this question I like to answer it uh, the Mujahideen were, if you put it into English language, freedom fighters. We were fighting for our freedom. Now I explained that in my remarks. And from different parts of the Muslim world and other parts of the world, people came to join the Jihad. Yes, truly, those that backed us also promoted radicalism in the jihad that we had, in the liberation that we had. But many of them went back to their countries and caused a lot of damage there as well. Now, Saudi Arabia is equally suffering from terrorism as we are. You saw incidents there. You saw them last month. You saw them some time back as well. Therefore, it suffers as much as we do from extremism and terrorism. Now, the Americans in the West, having backed extremism in Islam for a purpose, uh, I would very much agree with you. Yes. Uh, but we on a larger platform of coexistence with other cultures and other religions, know that the extremism that affects Muslims, where we are victims, is not ours, doesn't belong to us, we are victims. And as such, as Muslims, we like to live in great harmony, in great harmony and coexistence 
with the rest of the world and all other religions. So I agree with one part of your question and I disagree with the other part of your question. أرجو إذا كان هناك سؤال أخير وفي موضوع المحاضرة. Last question regarding. السلام عليكم فخامة. The uh, seminar. Your Excellency عب عبد الله الشحي Director General of the Emirates Company. Welcome in your uh, to your second country, the UAE. As everyone knows that the UAE uh, has a number of nationalities uh, that live here in the country. In your opinion, what should be asked uh, uh, at the moment, what are the procedures, precautionary procedures that the society should take at the moment to defend itself, to defend itself amidst the terrorist groups that are working on destroying the current society uh, uh, where some uh, are really embracing so many of them. Uh, the Middle East in general is uh, suffering organized uh, revolutions uh, and its uh, effect is direct uh, definitely on children when it comes to the behavior of bringing and to motivate them to create uh, problems within the country. What are the precautionary measures that should be taken at this stage due to the experience that you have passed through in Afghanistan? Uh, uh, thank you very much. And I apologize for asking this question because uh, reminiscent of the sufferings that you have passed in your country. And welcome again to U UAE. Thank you, my brother. To before I, I answer your question, my brother, I will go for a minute to um, uh, uh, answer a, a part of the question that uh, my brother, uh, other brother Carl uh, asked earlier. On America, my friend, yes, we in Afghanistan did support the arrival of America in Afghanistan to defeat uh, extremism and terrorism. And they did help liberate our country, no doubt, 14 years ago from an extremely uh, dark period of our history, where schools were closed, where people uh, were deprived of any opportunity for life, where our country was under some form of secret invasion. We welcomed them and their help and the help of uh, uh, UAE and the help of Saudi Arabia and the help of China. I don't know if Chinese ambassador is here. I, I, I was told he, he might be here. Uh, and um, some uh, Western countries and uh, Iran and uh, India and um, Russia and our other neighbors all helped Afghanistan get liberated from that dark period. So we don't regret that. We are happy about that. My problem with America emerged when they began to bomb Afghanistan in the name of the war and terror, our villages, our homes. And when they began to imprison Afghans, that's where I began to have differences with America, and that's where I raised my voice and spoke clearly about it. Uh, I have a clear difference of opinion with America on these issues. But I clearly recognize also American help for Afghanistan. Uh, the roads that were built, uh, the schools that were built, the uh, better health services that we got, in which our uh, Muslim brothers, especially from the Arab world, also participated, as I mentioned earlier. So uh, let's be fair. Uh, I'm one of the greatest critics of America today, uh, perhaps around the world, uh, for what they have done in Afghanistan, for what they're doing elsewhere. But I also would thank the American people for what they've done for Afghanistan in, in, in terms of the provision of uh, um, uh, better livelihood, a better economy, and all that. Yes, I agree with you, they have a big design. Surely they have a big design. If I'm America, I would have big designs too. Uh, it is for us to make sure, as Muslims and as individual countries, to make sure that we don't fa fall victim to those designs. So we have to be clever. Uh, and I referred in my speech in a way to this, that we must educate ourselves better. 
we must make sure that we are smarter and that's where we will win. On the question of the spread of terrorism, my brother asked a question and how to protect uh, a society like UAE that is inclusive, that has uh, too many nationalities uh, working in it, in it. I believe you have people from all over the world here working. Um, well, I think what you have done so far is great. Uh, you are a, an example of, of, uh, of uh, a great masterly work. Uh, you're secure and safe, so you tell us how to do it. <laughs> we must learn from you. Thank you. At the end, I would like to reiterate on behalf of uh, Dr. Jamal Sanad al Swaidi, Director General of the Emirates Center for Strategic Studies and Research, all the thanks and appreciation for His Excellency Dr. Hamid Karzai. And I would like to reiterate uh, uh, our apology for the question that was asked, which uh, has uh, uh, no relation whatsoever with the center. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, for your presence and uh, I wish you the best of luck and invite you to uh, have dinner with us uh, at the center. Thank you.